either Dr. Frederick or myself from the admissions office. So, um, Dr. Frederick, we'll start with you. Well, I was, uh, I'll start off by introducing myself and telling you a little bit about my background. Then I want to hear a little bit from you. Um, but I'm Sandy Frederick. This will, I'm coming up on my third year here at Emory & Henry College. Um, I was telling Jackson, uh, I spent about 12 years teaching, mostly middle school, social studies. I taught in Texas and here in Virginia. And uh, then I became an administrator. And I was administrator um, here in Virginia for about five years. And uh, I really miss teaching. I love teaching and uh, Emory and Henry kind of gave me the opportunity to do a little bit of all the things that I love. And um, so I'm here in the education department as the department chair now. And uh, I really love Emory and Henry College and I'm gonna get to share with you a little bit today about why I think our program is so successful and, and such a good fit for so many students, okay? But what I'd like to hear from you is um, just because you all may not know each other, um, is tell us your name, where, where you're coming from, or where you're Zooming from, I should say, and then um, what's making you think about wanting to be a teacher? So I, I'm just gonna go in order of my screen here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, I know Jackson, you already told us, but the others may not have heard, so we'll start with you. All right. Um, hi, I'm Jackson Arnold. Uh, I'm from from rural Virginia, um, which is like kind of northern Virginia. Um, and the thing that made me want to start teaching is, I guess it's like my way of giving back because I took so much for you know the 13 years of you know your K through 12 or whatever, and then you got your college degrees that are coming up. It's just my way of helping out society and everything else and teaching the future generations. All right, and then I see Caitlin next. Hi, I'm Caitlin. Um, I'm doing education because I have a passion to teach English overseas. Um, the country that I'd really like to do is South Korea or Japan. So I want to teach English as a second language. All right, very good. And then Sam. Uh, hey, I'm Sam Van Dyne. I'm from Fort Chisel, Virginia. And the reason I'm looking in, into education is I just think it would be a good way, like Jackson said, to impact um, some uh, kids' lives and just help them to get on a good track and make a good impression on their lives. All right, very good. Uh, Miranda, I'll see you next. Hi, everyone. I'm Miranda. I'm from Jonesville, Virginia, in Lee County. Um, I'm considering going into education, preferably music education, and possibly teaching young children, because I, I feel like I, I work very well with them. All right, very good. And then Mika, I see you next. Can you hear us, Mika? I think you're still muted. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, I'm from Hernan, Virginia, and I want to teach history because it's one of my favorite subjects, and I want other kids to really like history and learn about it. Very good. All right, and then I see Anna. Um, I'm from Sugar Grove, Virginia. Um, I'm transferring in from Wickfield, and I would really like to teach math um, because I had some really good teachers from my past, and I'd like to help kids learn math and teach them the way that I was taught. All right, very good. And you said you're at Wickfield now and you're transferring? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, very good. And then I see uh, Sarah Weathers next. Uh, yeah. Um, hi, I'm Sarah. I'm from Eastern Montgomery. And um, sorry, my uh, camera isn't working right now. So that's why I don't have my camera on. But um, I want to I've been wanting to go and teaching, uh, preferably like early childhood education, and um, special education, because I've just 
I've grown up around teachers and a bunch of children, and I just, I love working with children, and I don't know, it's just something I like to do. Very good. And I see Christian uh, next. Uh, hello, my name is Christian Yates. I'm from Chesapeake, Virginia, and I'm uh, interested in uh, teaching probably elementary education because I'm, I've always had a, a fondness in uh, helping out kids, and it's just something I've kind of been interested in. All right. Very good. And then I don't know if the, uh, Olivia is still on with us. Maybe she had to go out. I don't see Olivia. Let's see. What? No, I don't think she's in right now. Okay. Maybe she'll come back here. Yeah. It's interesting to me because you, this is a question I ask uh, our education majors um, in the very first class they have with me, which is with human um, growth and development. And their, their answers are very similar to you all's answers as to what's motivating them to want to be a teacher. And I'd like to show you a quick video of some of our students who uh, will either be student teaching this year or have just recently completed student teaching and graduated. And you can kind of hear a little bit about why they wanted to be a teacher and what, what attracted them to Emory and Henry. So I'm gonna try to share my screen here. I'm gonna hope it works. All right. Uh, Madison Orland, I'm from Bladesburg, Virginia, and I'm majoring in interdisciplinary music education. Uh, my name is Brian Batista, I'm from Winchester, Virginia, and I'm a music education major. My name is Emma Walker, I'm an interdisciplinary English education major with a special education credential, and I'm from Avenue, Virginia. My name is Jacob Hess, I'm from Avenue, Virginia. I studied biology at Emory and Henry College, and I graduated in May of 2016, and now I'm a part of the Fast Track program. So I chose to be a teacher because I realized that a lot of the, the people that I grew up around, in fact, were my teachers, and I realized that those people were my heroes. And over time, I realized that I wanted to be that hero for someone else so that they could grow up and be you know, everything that they could possibly be. Uh, the biggest reason I chose teacher prep is because as I was growing up, my biggest mentors were my teachers. So when I was looking for a major to really pursue, it was also lifelong information. Um, the best thing I can think of to be a teacher is also I want to you know, be a role model to you know, my younger generation. I want to be a teacher because I've had a lot of influential teachers in my life. I wanted to pay that back and that's a so I just never had it for a multitude of reasons. Um, they had baseball, but also they had a five-year fast track for education, which is something I was uh, very interested in, and it was uh, had a reputation around here, and that was kind of the best of both worlds. So I just never had it for because um, it felt like home, and because um, at a lot of other schools that I was looking at, it had a super top-notch. And I knew that that's what I wanted to do. So I chose the fast track program because after I graduated in May of 2016 from Henry Henry College, I went off and worked as a chemist for a few years. And after that, the only choice that I really had to do what I wanted to do, which was teach, was to come back and do a fast track program. And it became probably the best program for me again in an area that I really loved. Obviously, I was going to go small. So like I said, their answers weren't much different than, than you all's, and they're, they're just now beginning to finish their program. Um, let, me, let me share this next screen with you here. Um, so I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about, they, they use some words that some of you might be familiar with, like elementary and SPED and secondary and things like that. And so I think what would probably be helpful, um, and I've talked to, I think Miranda, you and I've met at a, a blue and gold admissions day. Um, but I, I wanted to talk to you not just about our program, but really what 
you have to do to become a teacher in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And then our program prepares you for that so that when you graduate, you are licensed to be a teacher in, in Virginia. And so um, I don't think we have any out of state, but I know Caitlin talked about maybe going other places to teach. And the wonderful thing about getting a license in Virginia is that we have what we call reciprocity with many states so that when you get a license in Virginia, that license will go into another state like Tennessee and they will give you a license because they recognize your license in Virginia. So we have, uh, I think, a great program that can prepare you to go a lot of different paths um, depending on what you want to do. Uh, in, in the, um, can everybody see my screen? Just give me a thumbs up, let me know. Yeah, you can see it, okay. Um, so when we talk about different tracks in Virginia and in our program, we really look at three tracks and that's elementary, which is pre-K through sixth grade. Um, and then there's secondary, which is sixth grade through 12th grade. And then there's our pre-K 12 program. So if you were to want to teach physical education, music, art, or any of the foreign languages, you actually would be licensed to teach those from preschool all the way to 12th grade. Um, when you're in these programs, elementary, secondary, I noticed some of you mentioned you already know you want to be like an elementary you get to choose in Virginia a, a content path, if I, if I could call it anything that would make it sound as simple as it is. Um, and so elementary at Emory and Henry, you choose from English, history, or math as your interdisciplinary pathway to becoming an elementary teacher. Now you all know from your own experience that uh, elementary teachers most likely teach all four subject areas, right? They get a class of little ones and they have to teach them math, English, science, social studies. So our program prepares you to teach all four, but you have a concentration in one particular area. Okay. Uh, secondary is more content specific. So you choose a subject area and you get a lot of intense um, training in your coursework, your content coursework. And then you go into the education department to learn how to teach chemistry or English or mathematics. Um, but there's just a lot more coursework in the content area because you all know in high school, if you teach algebra one, you've got to really know your algebra one, right? So once you choose your track, you choose that subject area concentration. At Emory & Henry, a couple of things that we have available to you uh, that I think are wonderful opportunities is we have our fifth year master's program of education. And so typically, you know, the, the undergrad degree is about four years. Um, so you could add on a year and get a master's in education. So when I got my master's, I got my four year degree, went off and taught and then decided I wanted my master's. And so uh, that meant I had to go back for two years. But the way we have it set up at Emory Henry you can get that in one year. So it's like half time, right? And, um, and graduate with your master's. And the reason I really like the program is that when you graduate and you get that first teaching job, you're not making the base teacher pay. You're also receiving your master's pay. So you get a little bit of extra money for having your master's degree. The other thing I like about our master's in education program is that it's really easy in the amount of time to get a special education endorsement. It's a, in Virginia, that's called an add-on endorsement. So some of our students, you saw Emma Wampler in the video, she is an interdisciplinary English elementary major, but she also added on some coursework that's gonna let, let her leave here with an add-on special education license. So she could become a special education teacher if she would like. So just opens up her options in the future uh, for what she'd like to do. But I think it's great just to have that background because you all will have students that have special needs in your classroom and having that extra training makes you just that much better prepared to meet their needs. Um, and so you can do just the fifth year master's program or you can slide in there your special education um, endorsement or you can even do the four-year program 
and have an ed a special education endorsement without getting a master's. All of that is possible within the time frame of your four years. The last um, program I'll just briefly mention, but I don't think it applies to any of you at this time, was our fast track program. And that's for students that have already received a bachelor's in a subject area. They can take three semesters and get all the, the requirements met for licensure and, and teacher education. So it's just a very quick way to become um, a teacher um, through uh, the licensure process. All right. Um, requirements for licensure. So you have your Emory and Henry requirements, but also Virginia says these are the things teachers have to be able to do before we will give them a license. Um, you can see that there's a GPA requirement. And that kind of makes sense, right? We want to make sure our teachers are competent in their subject areas, that they're good students, because they're going to be teaching our students, right? Um, there's also some state manda mandated assessments. Um, the Praxis One is kind of a general knowledge test, just to say, say do you have basic skill and understanding of the subject areas? Um, and then the Virginia Communication and Literacy Assessment, or the VCLA, is a test to make sure that you can communicate through reading, writing, and other communications effectively, because obviously teachers need to be able to communicate effectively with students and parents, right? Um, those two tests, most of our students take within the first year or two at Emory and Henry. Um, the next test, the reading for Virginia educators, is only for people in elementary or special education. Um, because those folks will be teaching students how to read, which is a big deal when you think about it. Uh, so that test makes sure that, that you demonstrate the skills for, to how, for how to teach a student how to read. And that's a test that you don't take until you take our reading class. We have a class that teaches you the skills that you need to be able to instruct little ones how to read and so forth. And that class actually prepares you for the RVE. So at the end of that course, you have, you know, everything you need to know to be able to pass that test. And then the last test that Virginia requires is the Praxis II, and that's your content test. So I heard um, Mika say he wants to teach history. So you would teach history and or if to teach history, you'd have to be able to know all the content for history because we don't know what position you're going to be hired into. Um, that test makes sure that you have all that knowledge, that content knowledge. For elementary folks, it's four subject areas of content knowledge. And so um, you, you could, um, you would have to know a little bit of everything, but your coursework at Emory and Henry prepares you for that test. So we tell students, once you finish all your history or math coursework, then you can take your practice too and, and probably be successful on it. So it's something you do later on in the program. Then we, we have some requirements in our program, like a program interview. That's just where we're making sure that you're meeting all the requirements. You student teach, um, and we make sure that you have all the health forms, background checks, um, all the CPR requirements that you need so that when you graduate, you are certified to be licensed in Virginia. We actually help you fill out the paperwork, send it off to the Virginia Department of Education. So within a few weeks after graduation, you have a teaching license in hand. Okay, so that's just the requirements. Again, these are requirements like you would see at any um, Virginia institution um, trying, to, trying to issue a Virginia license. Uh, the last thing I kind of want to talk to you before you ask me maybe some questions is, you know, what, what are the advantages of Emory and Henry? And some of you have already you've already registered for coursework. So you're probably starting to see some of this. And one of those things is it's personalized. You know, I, I know all the students' names in the education department. I have you all in my classes. I get to know you really well. I mean, for me, I'll, I'll probably have most of you two or three times before you student teach. Um, so we get to know you really well. Uh, we're, we're not just knowing, but we're using current research practices in our classroom. So we're demonstrating to you what good teaching and learning looks like and, sh and showing you what's the latest thing, um, you know, on the education front. 
uh, so that when you go into the schools, we don't want you feeling like you weren't prepared. We want you feeling like you're on the cutting edge. So we're, we're gonna make sure that you've um, been instructed in those cutting edge techniques within the classroom. Uh, continual guidance and support. Um, you will have an education advisor uh, and you'll get to know them really well and we meet with our advisees each semester. And yeah, we help you get your coursework. We make sure that you're taking the correct courses that you need, but it's also there, we're there for extra support. You know, if, if you're having trouble with testing, we're gonna find support for you. Um, we get to know where do you, where do you wanna go? Where do you wanna teach? And we're gonna try to help you do the things necessary to get the positions that you want. So we get to, we get to have a personal relationship with our advisees within the department. Um, and then our, our professors in the education department, we all have teaching experience in, in P12 classrooms. So I was telling Jackson, I taught, I taught, you know, middle school, seventh and eighth grade uh, for most of my career. Um, Dr. Crickmer, she taught at an all boys private elementary school in New York State. She has a very unique uh, experience. Um, Professor Hainsworth taught math here in Washington County. Um, some of our other uh, professors in the department all have uh, teaching um, um, experience in our local area. So they're not just telling you, hey, here's what the great theorists say about teaching. They're actually telling you what they know works in the classroom. And then the other thing I like about our program that distinguishes us a little bit from other programs in Virginia is that when you graduate, you have everything you need to be licensed. Um, so there's nothing that you really have to do after you graduate. The paperwork is sent off. You're going to get a certificate in the mail. You're going to be licensed and ready for a job. And we have a high rate of job placement with our, with our um, candidates. I uh, just, um, of our, I think we had about 20 student teachers in the spring. And I think at this point, all but four have positions and we're still pretty early in the hiring um, season for, for K-12. So, you know, we, uh, many of them, a couple of our students had jobs in hand, contract in hand before spring break of the semester. So we, uh, there's a demand for teachers in Virginia and across the nation, but I feel like we do a good job getting you ready for interviews, positions available, to get your foot in the door so that you get selected early on in the process. So um, I, I feel like those are the things that set us apart a little bit from other programs. But I wanted to ask you all, what, what questions do you have? Uh, I have a question. Okay. Uh, so will you uh, register for class virtually on your date for orientation? Yes, that is how they're doing orientation this summer. Okay, thanks. You'll, you'll get assigned Christian a first year advisor. And then once you actually declare your, your program of study, you'll get assigned to um, an education advisor in the department but also you get a content area advise, advisor. So, you know, if you're saying, well, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be interdisciplinary math, you get an advisor in the math department and the education department. Uh, that just helps keep you on track for your coursework. Okay. What other questions do you have? Anna? I have two questions. The first question is, um, as a transfer student, would it be difficult to um, go with a five-year plan or program? No, it would not be. You could still, you could still do it. Um, it would depend on what coursework you're transferring in. Um, have you registered yet? I've registered for some courses, yes. Okay. And I think um, for the summer, um, our education coordinator, Laurie Henshelwood, is meeting via Zoom. I don't, have you met with her? 
Okay. So she, she'll help you know what, what will count and kind of get you on the right track for things. Um, no, it's, it's totally doable. Um, for the master's program, you apply for it and you have to meet certain GPA requirements. So there's an essay, you have to have references. And then once you get in that program, we just make sure that you take the right courses in the right sequence. Mm -hmm. All right. And really, you know, the graduate portion of the coursework, what makes it a little bit different is um, you, um, you do more research papers, projects, things like that compared to undergraduate. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about um, hours in the classroom. Um, throughout our program, you most likely will have upwards of 500 plus hours in schools. We get you out in the schools early. The first course that you will take in the education department is Education 114. It's our intro to education course. And um, we set you up in a classroom um, in the area that you think you would like to be in for 20 hours of observation. We're just trying to get you in there to make sure that you're, you're feeling good about education still. We obviously don't want you to go through the whole program and then we put you in student teaching and you're in a classroom and you're like, I don't like this at all. <laughs> so we get you in there early. Um, you also have two other observation courses. They're called Education 115, and that just gives you some additional experiences. One of those experiences will be in Bristol, Virginia City Schools to give you more of what a diverse school system would look like. Um, and then you'll have some courses that have um, different requirements for observation and participation in a, a K-12 classroom. For instance, the reading class I was talking about you actually go into an elementary school and you get assigned a student and you help them read. You, you, you employ the things that you're learning in, the, in your coursework to teach them some reading skills. Um, in, in my human growth and development course, you spend six hours in a preschool classroom just to kind of see what that developmental stage looks like. And then you all will also take practicum, which is a, is a teaching experience before student teaching, where you spend about 100 hours in a classroom, where you start to teach, uh, you know, on your own. You spend some time observing, but then you also present some lessons. And I myself or someone else from the department comes in and kind of coaches you, you know, talks about how your lesson went and things we could tweak to make it better. Um, and then there's the student teaching semester, which is 300 hours. Um, so it's the whole semester, you're fully immersed in, in a classroom. Uh, for our elementary folks, you would be in a kindergarten classroom for half of the time, and then you'll be in an upper elementary the other half of the time. You have two placements. Um, the reason we do that is, you know, some schools will put you in just kindergarten for the entire placement, but then you get hired to teach fifth grade. <laughs> and that's a big jump and in, in, in change in students and their abilities. So we wanna give you a little bit of variety. Um, if you're PK-12, like you're in human health and performance or music, um, you'll do two placements, one in elementary for student teaching and one in secondary for student teaching. And then if you are secondary, you do your student teaching in a high school placement. But in practicum, those 100 hours, we put everyone in middle school because middle school kind of gets left out and so uh, that means all of our elementary and secondary folks will get a little bit of middle school time. And what we find is a lot of them, even though they dread it, they end up loving it <laughs> and wanting to teach middle school. Um, but uh, it just gives you a lot of different placements so you can kind of see where your niche might be, okay? But um, a lot of time in the classroom, a lot of time in the field, as we say. What other questions have you thought of? I have a question. Okay. So how, how early, or is this something we just need to talk to our um, counselor about applying for the five-year master's program? Miranda, are you coming in as a transfer? No, I'm coming straight from high school. Okay. So I, I would say take, you know, uh, really probably at the end of your sophomore or second year, 
you would want to start pursuing that. Um, that makes sure, for instance, human growth and development. The undergraduate is 305, education 305. The graduate portion is education 505. If you end up taking 305 and then you decide you want to become a master's student, you have to retake 505. So the earlier we get that on the radar, we make sure that you get in 505 and you're, and you're not having to retake coursework. Does that make sense? So it gets you on the path with the right courses so you're not wasting any time. Um, so I would say at the end of that sophomore year, that's when we'd want to meet with you and start looking at getting you your application in and moving forward. Okay, thank those, you. Those of you transferring, like Anna, Caitlin, if that's something you're interested in, we would want to talk in the fall about going ahead and getting you in that direction. What other questions do you have? How many of you, and you could just kind of show me by waving your hand or hitting the thumbs up button. Um, how many of you, when I mentioned the assessments that kind of gave you a little bit of heartburn? Yeah. Um, we, uh, one of the things we started this past year is um, we have tutoring available for all of the assessments. And that's some of our students who've already passed them our, our student instructors, or SIs as we call them, and they hold sessions and uh, put you in contact with study materials, videos, tutorials, things like that to help get you prepared. Um, because you have to pass all those assessments before we let you student teach. Um, so that, those are things that are available to you. We have other, other tutoring opportunities available if testing is just really not your thing. And that's something that kind of gives you uh, a little bit of anxiety like it does me. Um, you know, there's things that we have available to help you get ready for that. And like I said, a lot of your coursework will help you prepare for that. What other questions do you have? Okay, Anna. I'm not sure if this is different for different schools, um, but is it easier to, if I want to teach high school in the future, would I want to start off with elementary? Is it easier to start with the younger grades and work my way up towards high school? Or is it easier to work backwards, like start teaching high school level and then work your way backwards? I think you can go either way. For in Virginia, and I think the same is true for Tennessee, you have to, um, for instance, let's say I get an elementary degree K-6, okay, and I decide that I want to teach middle school. I could teach sixth grade in middle school, but I'm not certified to teach seventh and eighth grade. I at that point, I can take the Praxis two in those areas and become certified. I, I get basically an add-on endorsement to what I already have. And so I know teachers that they get add-on endorsements in lots of things. You know, they get, if uh, I've known teachers that will get an add-on endorsement in another subject area. Uh, it's just a matter of passing that test and becoming certified in it. Um, so, it, it just depends on how far down elementary you think you'd want to go or how high up in, in, in high school. Um, you know, in high school, you have some subject areas that are very um, specific, like physics. You'd have to take the physics praxis, you know, which sounds very daunting to me <laughs> to even think about. But uh, you, you can add on endorsements once you, you get into teaching positions. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We, we do have some students that, for instance, um, we had a graduate this year, interdisciplinary math elementary, um, but really wanted to teach middle school. And so she took the middle school Praxis math endorsement and ended up getting a job as an eighth grade algebra teacher. <laughs> um, so you, you, can, you can do those things. Some, some things require coursework um, if you wanna do them now 
but um, I would I would advise you just knowing what the system looks like on the other end to just go ahead and get that original endorsement and then you can add on any endorsements that you want. So what do you want to guess are the areas in Virginia that we have teaching shortages? Uh, maybe male teachers. Yes, that those are we, we want our teacher population to be as diverse as our student population. So that's important. Um, we actually have a pretty good ratio in our department of male versus female teachers. Um, but I'm talking about subject areas. Subject areas that schools are just really struggling to find teachers in those areas. My guess would be like upper level math courses or subjects. That's one of them. Jackson. Is English one of them? Actually, no. No? No, but English as a second language is. ESL, okay. Uh, you're right, Anna, your upper level maths uh, are an area. I'd say math across the board. I tell my math majors, you're gonna get a job <laughs> because people are looking for you, okay? Um, any others you can think of? The other sciences, those upper level sciences especially, um, you know, you saw in the video, Jake, he was a biology major, then came back from fast track. And he was one of those that had a job before the school year ended because he was highly sought after. They, need, they had multiple science positions open. Uh, also foreign languages, just to think about. That's sometimes a scary proposition for some, but other people, I mean, Caitlin says she wants to go to other countries, so, so that might be up her alley. Um, and then the other one is special education. And so I told, I had a student this year who actually uh, had a job um, in, uh, by February this year, and it was because he was special education. Had multiple offers. Um, kind of had his pick of where he wanted to go. And um, there, there, and he was looking at, um, like an autism specific classroom. Um, you know, spe special education, it can be everything from being an inclusion teacher where you're in the regular ed classroom, providing supports to students, all the way to what we might call um, a center-based or self-contained classroom with students with severe disabilities. Um, that student, he knew he really wanted to be in a self-contained classroom. And so in his practicum experience, we put him there. We said, if that's what you want to do, let's get you experience in that area. And that was very valuable to him to know what he needed to know. When he went in those interviews for those self-contained classrooms. He knew his stuff. He knew what to expect. So um, those are, you know, special education. There's just a lot of positions always open. Um, and a lot of different opportunities. And, you know, I tell students, even if you don't think you want to use the special education endorsement, if you get it, let's say you teach math or you teach history for 10 years and you're like, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of done with this. I'm, I've done it. I can, I'm, I can do it well. And you say, I want to try something different. You could say, well, I want to go on to special education and use that part of my endorsement. So that's just something to think about. Those are, to get your special education endorsement, there's not a praxis test, which that's a good thing, right? There's just three extra courses. Three extra courses is all you need for the special education endorsement. What other questions? Do you have questions about maybe the fall? What to expect? Uh, I have a question, not exactly related to that, but uh... Is there going to be any transportation when uh, going to other schools when 
when you're doing observations in the classroom? Most students drive themselves Christian. However, um, I know in the one course I teach, there's a lot of carpooling that goes on. They just all make sure they sign up for the same times to go and observe. And then also we have some services on campus that if you, you know, make sure that you fill out, you know, the um, sign up sheet early enough, we have, um, I think one or two cars that students will actually drive other students to places they need to go in the area. And that includes student teaching, um, or not, not necessarily student teaching, but like if you had to go do an observation. You know, student teaching, you're pretty much you're in the field, you're at your school. Um, you're, you're only on campus uh, once a week. All right, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question about my, oh, I'm sorry. You got it, you got it, you go first. Okay, thank you. Um, I have a question about with my fall schedule. I mentioned to my advisor, Ms. Hinchelwood, that I think I'm gonna do the master's program because it just seems to like lay my schedule out a lot easier. Mm -hmm. And I she put me into a 549 English or education 549, but I never filled out like a form or applied so, or anything. You can take up to two master's level courses a semester without being accepted into the program. So okay. probably what she's doing is going ahead and getting you in there mm -hmm. and giving you time enough to apply for the program. Okay, how do I apply for the program? Um, our graduate coordinator is um, mm -hmm. Professor Mark Hainsworth mm -hmm. and I would contact him and he can send you the application packet and information. Okay. Thank you. All right, Jackson, did you have one? Yeah, so um, in high school, I took the Parapro exam. Do you know what that is? Yeah, it's like the student teacher assistant, whatever. Does that help anything or? I don't, and it was for teaching, correct? Yeah. I don't think that it counts in Virginia for any right. of your assessments. Okay. It probably gives you a little bit of a leg up being ready for like Praxis One mm -hmm. and, the, and those things. But as far as I know right now, they're not counting it for anything. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll look into it, but um, I've not heard, heard anything. All right, cool. Now, Jackson mentioned that he was in a Teachers for Tomorrow program. Was anyone else in a Teachers for Tomorrow program or a Teacher Cadet program? Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Any All other right. questions? Oh. Uh, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I mean, this really isn't a, I wouldn't count it as like a, but uh, real, I go to a homeschool co-op and uh, I uh, assisted a, a second grade class for uh, for like a, maybe half a year or so. So I got some experience from that, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I, th I, th I think our agreement is specifically with that Teachers for Tomorrow program because yeah. they, have, they have specific coursework. Um, so I don't think that would count, but it's still good experience because it lets you yeah. know, it lets you know what to expect. And I, and I would encourage you all. I don't know what you do in the summers or um, you know as much experience as you can get, whether it's working in a camp or a daycare or whatever the case is, a preschool. You know getting in there and, and working with kids and, and figuring kids out, you know, that's just going to prepare you that much more for the, the realities of the classroom. And um, it's tough being a teacher today. And of course, right now in the middle of this pandemic, it's, it's provide, it's, it's even tougher in some ways because we're not, we're not in contact with our students. Um, but I, you know, I think um, if you, if you love kids, 
you know, if you have that in your heart, that's, that's your halfway there. You know, that, that just sets you up for uh, handling some of the other stressors and pressure, uh, pressures of the classroom. But you can, um, if you just love kids, I, I, I've told my students the 12 years I taught, I loved going to my job every day. Uh, I loved my students. I mean, even though they were quirky seventh and eighth graders, I, I just enjoyed them. And when I was with them, I was having a lot of fun teaching them and learning with them. Um, so I, I'll tell you that teaching is never boring. It is There is always something going on. And like I said, there's other pathways. Jackson mentioned wanting to be an administrator. Um, and that was something I did. And you'll, you'll have to go back and get a master's for that. We, that your master's in education at Emory will not qualify you to be an administrator. Um, but, you know, there, that's a whole different line of work. You get to, you get to serve in a different capacity, um, students. So just a, a lot of different opportunities. Let me ask you one last question. Any concerns? Anybody try to talk you out of being a teacher? Like, don't do that. Well, it's a very rewarding profession. And, and when you all told me why you wanted to be a teacher, that tells me that you, you've kind of already figured it out. Um, that, you know, you want to have a job that you feel like you're making a difference every day. And, you know, teachers have a huge impact on students. I mean, for, for probably some of you and for some of the students I've served, um, you know, that, that adult is the one positive adult person in their life on a daily basis. And uh, so you can just have a huge impact on students. You know, I think teachers, you know, um, our education in general kind of gets a bad rap for pay, you know, and, and yet it's, are you gonna make as much as being you know, a banker, a lawyer, or something like that, no. Um, but I think that it's a very good pay, you know, especially here in Southwest Virginia, it's, it, it's a very good pay because of the cost of living here. Now, if I were to go up to Front Royal, that'd be a different case. <laughs> um, they get paid more, but it also costs more to live there. But I will tell you the benefits, health and retirement benefits that you get with teaching, um, is, is, just, is just huge, but the biggest thing that you will gain from being a teacher are the relationships that you will form with your students. They're lifelong. Um, it is, uh, I have students sitting in my Emory classrooms that were my eighth graders, you know, and, uh, and we, we still have great relationships, and, and those are the things that, that make it all, all worth it. Makes, it, makes you want to get up in the morning and go do your job. So don't, don't listen to the naysayers because it is a great career to have. Um, and maybe the most noble one, especially this day and age uh, for, the, for the lasting impact that you can have. So um, unless you have other questions, um, you all can find me on Emory's website, my email. If something comes up, you didn't think about it right now, you feel free to email me um, and I'll get back to you. Um, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you all. And uh, once you get on campus, if there's things that you need, you just need to let us know. Uh, come up to the education floor on McLaughlin Street. There's the Neff Center there, Ms. Henshelwood's there. Some of you already met her and we're there to help you. We're there to, um, to support you in any way that you need. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate y'all coming. This is great. Yeah. Yes. In admissions, we're we're there. We're here in our homes, or we're in the office. Um, we're all back in the office on a sporadic schedule now. So if y'all need us, we're in there. So, Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Frederick. All right, you all stay healthy, safe, and I hope to see you all in the fall. Yeah, you too. All right, y'all take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.